Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocates. Once again, it's time to call it like it is. Ironically, Uche, usually a social media advocate, is calling for a regulation of same. I need to hear on this. Ikene says your ego is your enemy. I'm certain she's talking to the man and woman in the mirror. Chuka calls out the recent ugly spate of sexual and violent crimes. Hmm. That just keep coming. David says death to Wakanda. Already, David? I thought it was Wakanda forever. Well, where one story ends, another begins. I'll be firing up the engine by taking up on my own constituency. I'm call out, calling out the judiciary, the science and elections camp. Watch this space after the break. According to Lord Denning, master of the roads, when a judge sits on trial, the judge is on trial. I'll be talking about judiciary, elections, and nuisance. Edo State has been in the eye of the storm for obvious reasons. The 2020 governorship election in the state and the two dominant political parties are not sparing anything in their bid to outdo one another, using senior advocates, the judiciary, to obtain conflicting interim and ex parte orders from everywhere on the same set of fact from courts of coordinate jurisdiction. However, this does not mean that there are no honest and hardworking judges senior advocates and lawyers who are doing everything possible to uphold and protect the sanctity of the judiciary. But the unfortunate part of it is that this, the ones granting these orders are the faces of lawyers and judges people will remember for a long time. Against that backdrop, concerns Nigerians have, and stakeholders have consistently warned lawyers and senior advocates and the judges not to lend themselves as tools to politicians at times like this. But it seems that call fell on deaf ear long time ago, with the numbers of conflicting orders emanating from the court in respect of their due election and politics of 2023. On both sides, there are accusations and counter-accusations of procured court orders here and there. And like these, our court and election would they day. It took the Supreme Court's intervention to save itself from fatal fall on its finality after the judgment in the governorship tussle in Imo and Baeza. But now politicians, lawyers, and judges are at it again. While some will argue that the courts must adjudicate on matters brought before it, I dare say that our courts are not that jobless to entertain every frivolous complaint, especially those bordering on conduct of membership or no membership, should primaries hold or not, candidature or no candidature. Rather, INEC should be empowered to monitor and guarantee compliance with these rules. Unfortunately, once these elections cases are instituted, other cases in the same court take the back seat. Since by the provisions of the Electoral Act, election cases, which are usually time-bound, must be disposed of timelessly, but must every decision of a political party be a subject of the litigation? You and I know it's all about personal interest, and any contrary expectation must be challenged. No wonder the politicians will stop at nothing to discredit one another and even resort to name-calling. As Wiki, Governor of River State has referred to members of his National Working Committee as tax collectors. I wonder who is paying the tax. Rather than some of these judges and senior lawyers as ministers at the Temple of Justice to refuse the locker of politicians to be part of these shenanigans, fueled by greed of a few, to not only destroy the judiciary but our democratic journey, I see them be ferried about in private jets to and from court in Abuja, Benin, and Port Harcourt. But if I may ask, Who's paying for this expensive hobby? Please, if you know the answer, don't keep it to yourself. With the expensive nature of these court cases against the current financial reality, 
One would have expected that mediation would be a better way out of the impasse, especially given the fact that the politicians want us to believe that our interests are the core of their crisis. Who be fool? We all know it's stomach infrastructure. If PDP is without a nationally recognized leader and is able to find a middle ground in their quest to capture Edo State, one would have expected even a better approach from APC, as I would have expected the president to timeously call his party men to order to help provide a much needed direction in the crisis. While I was doubting if he's indeed even aware of the crisis, he did intervene, and when he did, he poured fuel on the already existing fire. Are you sure our president is truly in charge? Or is he being used by Prozzi to destroy his own house? Time will tell. The saddest part of all of this is that the politicians are doing a very poor job of showing the younger generations how politics should be. And the youth, having learned all the wrong things about politics and governance, will unfortunately interpret the same as a roadmap to relevance in Nigerian political space. What a shame. I would therefore advocate that as voters, we should rise above the lies and sentiment thrown at us by politicians about the urge and desire to serve the people and consistently interrogate every manifesto's campaign promises and benchmark same against precedents and antecedents. We should refuse to be used as pawns to fight visible and invisible political opponents in a battle that is not about us, knowing fully well that they will always settle and realign tomorrow after the dust of the election are over. And lawyers and judges should strive to write their name in gold in the sand of time, as those who assisted the country develop and deepen democracy are not those that destroy it. That way, posterity will be kind to our memories and generation are born. Otherwise, soon people will rather resort to self-help than going to court. That is if not already happening. For it can only be well when we act well. Interesting. I think it all, we, I think we understand now why they don't take education seriously in Nigeria. It's so that the populace have no idea what's going on. They can bamboozle the 85% that are not um, ready to take them on. Uh, out of the remaining 15, some have been bought. That leaves a very small percentage to actually know what is happening. Um, yeah, so I, I, I can see now why the education uh, budget is never enough. Personally, the, the, the major, it's not a very popular opinion for obvious reasons, because it's not a very politically correct thing to say. But I'm of the opinion that regardless of the, the, the uh, lack of quality in the education or the poverty that afflicts people, as we well know, in this part of the world, I'm always of the opinion that human beings always have a choice. Human beings always have some, a measure of agency. And I always believe that if you've I mean, if you've suffered Nigeria in a way that is much worse and much more visceral than anybody in this room, I don't think you should need any additional motivation to reject the status quo. But what I say in Nigeria is that the people who are worst hit by what Nigeria is are the most enthusiastic defenders of the status quo, including their politicians. And sometimes when you, when you are the person who puts your head above the parapet, to speak of, these same people are the ones that will attack you. So it creates an interesting catch-22. I, I don't know if uh, Mekene or Uche agrees with that. Uh, yeah, I, I, be, yeah, I mean, I, I, I second um, uh, David in the sense that I never see, it never, it was the word, never seems to amaze me how people keep defending the status quo. You know, when will we have enough? But the two points I made down, I wrote down here are, um, to do with money, I heard a discussion this morning saying that money is at the heart of everything we're doing wrong in Nigeria. And then again, another discussion coming into work about how, whether APC or PDP were lacking in ideology. And even if there was any such ideology, people are not even following the script because they're happy to just cross carpet. So it's clear what is motivating them. It's personal power and, and, and petty vendetta. So what, what was coming to my mind as you were speaking, Libros, is we need to now look at, when we're talking of restructuring, we need to look at ways future politicians, people looking towards 2020, and those of us looking to support them, should be looking towards restructuring our country around ideology in such a way that we make money and people who use money as an incentive the enemy. We need to now, because if we don't find a way of following the money trail and exposing, because it's clear whether the judges or the sands or people who are making money, their primary reward, if we don't hold them to account and make them look as bad as they, you know, the enemy that they are to the state, then we continue to have this kind of um, destructive behavior. And then everybody else will be following them. Like you say, no role models. You know, so the people that see that, 
money is the reward, that money is king, money is God. And they will continue to I hear you, make, a make, make an example of people who make money God. And then you put in place, you know, go on both sides, a reward system I, I, for those who are I, can I, you know, uh, doing the right thing, then perhaps we find out where else. Yeah, yeah um, Liberace, thank you for your advocacy. I think, you know, we're kind of back to the same thing. Um, the elections are coming up soon again. Um, and here we are trying to prepare the populace on what they should be doing. I think really in these last, would you call it last uh, two years, I mean two years, no, six, is it, how many years have APC been in? Five years. But um, since they've been in, we've, I think everybody, including the residents of Katsina, has now seen that voting in your brother or your relative or your blood doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the things that you, you look forward to. So. Hopefully, this period has opened up our eyes, and um, especially those who are still asleep. And uh, hopefully, they will, they'll get to a point where, come the next elections, they will do their due, due diligence, they will do their research, they will ask the relevant questions. Because if we continue doing this, you know, Nigeria can never be great. Well, on this program, time is not always on our side. And like I said, where one story ends, another begins. After the break, Uche takes on the wheel and seems to be saying, Regulate or be regulated. I can't wait to hear.